Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Well, I just finished my morning swim, and now we're going to dive into a new book. We're going to dive into the book of Ezekiel, looking at chapters 1 and 2 of the book of Ezekiel this morning. Now, Ezekiel's ministry overlaps with that of both Jeremiah and Daniel. Ezekiel was carried away captive to Babylon in 597 BC when Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem for the second time and took away captives. Ezekiel was from the line of priests and he was called by God into the ministry in, at, uh, or in 592 BC when he was in Babylon as a captive. He was at the age of 30. Now he prophesied for at least 22 years to the captives who were in Babylon. And now, as we look at the book of Ezekiel, the first 24 chapters were written prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. And so just as Jeremiah was doing in Judah, he was warning the, uh, the people in Judah, uh, in, Ju in, in Jerusalem, that the destruction of the city was coming if they would not turn from their idolatry. And Ezekiel was doing the same thing to the captives in Babylon calling them back to God, even though they were in the midst of captivity. The book of Ezekiel is probably best recognized for the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled in the millennial kingdom, which is the focus of chapters 33 through 50 uh, through 48. Now, as I mentioned, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel were contemporaries. And while there's no record that the three of them uh, ever met, it's quite likely that they did. Now, some suggest that Ezekiel was a, a pupil of uh, Jeremiah. What we do know for certain is that there were three men called by God, ministering simultaneously with different responsibilities in different areas of focus. Jeremiah was focused on Judah, prophesying to the, to the princes, the priests, and the people. Ezekiel's ministry, as we mentioned, was to the captives in Babylon before the destruction of Jerusalem and after. Daniel was called to be a voice to and in the government of the oppressing nation. And guess what? They didn't criticize one another or question the other's calling or their ministry or say, you ought to be doing what I'm doing. They apparently understood the complementarian nature of God's kingdom. As Paul described the church in the New Testament as one body, many members, working in concert together under the head, which is Christ Jesus. So something to be learned here that while we are in the body of Christ, we have a different area of focus. And here are three men called into the ministry, focusing on different areas in a way that complemented one another, and they were not critical. Now, the book of Ezekiel is filled with uh, visions and symbolic actions, which frankly are open to different interpretations. And I'm going to be very candid up front. My area of biblical expertise is not in biblical prophecy. It's not that I'm not for it. I'll certainly mention aspects of that, but I'm going to stick pretty much to the common understanding of the prophecy of Ezekiel. I'm not going to venture far beyond that. The focus, and just to, uh, to remind you, the focus of our journey through the Bible, the reason we're doing this two-year journey through the Bible is simply to encourage you to be in the Word of God and to read the Word of God. To, as we're going to see, we can't speak the Word of God unless we have first consumed the Word of God. And my goal is to help you apply the principles of Scripture to your everyday life, develop a healthy, strong biblical worldview, a foundation upon which you can stand with confidence in a day when everything we believe in is under attack. And, and I, I again, want to encourage you to do this. As every time you open the Word of God, pray for the Holy Spirit to lead you into all understanding of the truth. That's why we've been given the Holy Spirit. Now, today I'm going to focus primarily on chapter 2, but I want to read a few verses from the beginning of chapter 1 and from the end of uh, chapter 1 before we jump into to, uh, chapter 2. All right, in the 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the exiles by the Kibar Canal, the heavens op were opened, and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiachin. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the Kibar Canal, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. These first three verses record the surroundings and the circumstances of Ezekiel's call. One thing to, uh, to note about Ezekiel is that he is very meticulous in recording the precise dates of his prophecies. He was carried away to, 
to Babylon in 597, five years later, established in Nippur, uh, which was about 50 miles from Babylon at the age of 30, the age at which priests would begin their service to the Lord, Ezekiel receives a call from God. Then we have his first vision, uh, something to keep in mind, the vision of Ezekiel. We see a lot of similarities, and we'll see this throughout uh, the, the book uh, we see a lot of similarities to John's book of Revelation. Verse 4, And I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire as it were gleaming metal. And from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had human likeness, but each had four faces, each of them had four wings, uh, and now drop down to verse 26. This was his first vision. Let's go to verse 26. And above the expanse over their heads, there was the likeness of a throne in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of the throne, throne was a likeness with human appearance. And upward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw as it were gleaming metal like the appearance of fire enclosed all around. And downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire. and There was brightness all around him, like the appearance of the bow that was, is in the cloud on the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness all around. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of one speaking. What Ezekiel saw was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ as he had a vision of the glory of God. No one has ever seen God. Even Moses, who asked to see God, only saw he only saw his glory. And so we see him seeing the glory of God. And what does he do? He falls on his face, which is a common for those who in, in, encounter the holiness and the glory of God. All right, let's go to chapter 2, which is a continuation of what we just read. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. You know, just a note here. As I said, this is the universal response to the presence of God falling on our face. Why? Because of the holiness of God and our lack thereof of holiness. But Paul tells us in the New Testament that we can boldly approach the throne of grace. Why is that? Because of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And then we can approach the throne of grace, just as the Spirit entered Ezekiel here to set him on his feet. You know, without the Holy Spirit, we have no power to stand. And we receive that Holy Spirit when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Verse 3, and he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impotent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Okay, so let's look at this. We're going to break this uh, down really into three parts. Number one, the call. I'm sending you. I am sending you. You know, Moses, he, he said, uh, who should I say sent me? I am. That is the highest authority. So Ezekiel is being sent by I am. Jesus has sent us. He was given all authority in heaven and on earth. We read this over in Matthew chapter 28, and he sends us forth. We have the authority to go forth just as Ezekiel did. So that was the call, all right? We've been given a call. We've been commissioned by God. We're going to read in the next chapter more about the commissioning. Now we have the challenge. Do not be afraid of them or their words. Now this presupposes that opposition will follow, and frankly, it will. It will follow us today. In fact, Jesus in John chapter 15 
told us that opposition would come when we follow him. Verse 18 of chapter 15 of the book of John, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. In verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Verse 20, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. You see, every call, every undertaking of God comes with this challenge. Do not fear. And you know why? Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear paralyzes. Faith propels us. We cannot walk in faith if we're bound up in fear. All right, so that's the challenge, and here's the command. Speak my words regardless. Ezekiel knew. He knew this quite well because, I mean, he had been carried off captive. He knew of their rebellion, but he was reminded of their rebellion. And this is important. Look again at verse 7. Ezekiel was not responsible for getting the people to obey the word of God. He was responsible for delivering the unedited word of God. He, he was not to tell them what they wanted to hear or to soften the word of God to make it more palatable. He was to speak the word of God. And that's what we're to do today. We're to speak the word of God. Of God it reminds me of uh, one of my my favorite stories from history, John Quincy Adams, one of the one of the greatest diplomats of uh, of of American history. He was uh, he became president um, and only served one term. But after he was the only president ever to do this. After serving as president, he ran for Congress. Uh, that, he's the only one that's ever done this, and he ran and he was elected for Congress. Served for almost twenty years. Here's the reason he did it. He did that because he was so adamant about seeing slavery ended. And so he was constantly bringing up this issue of slavery. And in fact, in 1836, Congress was so tired of him talking about slavery that they adopted what was called the gag rule that prevented you from bringing up the, the whole subject, the term slavery on the House floor. And so he was approached by uh, some cynical reporter saying, aren't you, uh, you know, you've wasted your time. You can't even talk about the issue any longer. And this was his response. John Quincy Adams said this. He said, duty is ours. Results belong to God. That is the call of the prophetic voice. The, our duty is to be obedient to God. The results, they belong to him. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for this book that we're now entering into, the book of Ezekiel, this prophetic voice of this man that spoke not just to the captives who were in Babylon. That was his primary audience. But Lord, we're his audience today. We're the audience to hear your word speaking even now to us through the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us through the reading of this book of Ezekiel. And Lord, may we grow in our understanding of your word and its application to our lives today. We thank you. We praise you and worship you, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. And um, remember, you can get the Bible reading plan. If you're new, go to frc.org Bible. Until next time, keep standing on the word.